Savings is a habit that we have to start now. It has to start now. There's something Pastor showed us some time ago, which I also have here. We have two people up there, A and B. Now, if we look up, we'll see that Saver B started at age 18. Saver A didn't save anything for a long time. If you look up there, we we'll discover that Saver B, even though saved for just seven years, but started early, has more than Saver A that didn't start early. So one reason why people don't grow their money is because they procrastinate on savings. I will do it next year. Don't worry. I don't have that. I would. We can see that starting early and not procrastinating help us to grow our money. When I first saw the analysis, when pastor sent it, I sat down and I said, there's need to talk about this early. And that's why I told the preteens to come and listen. It's not just for adults. They need to start early. So one of the reasons why we don't grow our money is because we procrastinate on savings and investment. Another reason is mismanagement of resources. Don't let pride keep you in debt. When I saw that, I was like, wow. A big house or a fancy car aren't worth a lifetime bondage. We just get the resources and we use it anyhow. I remember there was a time Pastor Gbade came here and he mentioned that he got money. Man, money passed through my hands. Probably he didn't know some things then. And so mismanagement of resources is one of the things that inhibits us from growing our money when we get it and we just use it anyhow if we look at the prodigal son the other one went out and mismanaged his resources such that he had to come back home begging so it's one of the things that affects us growing our money another one is unrealistic lifestyle don't buy things you can't afford with money that you don't have to impress people you don't like if we have watched the film alakada Sometimes when I watch movies, I try to learn some things there. The lady wasn't what she was telling everybody she was. She was just packaging herself, trying to impress Tony Blair Flair. I went to a realistic lifestyle. There's really no need to be what you're not. Because everybody is using a land cruiser. I also must use a Land Cruiser. Everybody is dressing this way. I also must dress that way. I remember when I first joined where I'm working, and I went for a training. Of course, at first I had to do very nice to Leron suits. So when I got to the training school, ah, people were like, your suit is looking so nice. I said thank you where did you get them i said i sold it my friend said ah no 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 no! don't tell anybody you did tell them you bought it i said well i, I bought it now after all i paid for it so i bought it and we went out one evening to a mall and um we went and saw an underwear for twenty-five thousand. i'm talking about 2003 2004 and i told my friend lola Day, I said, if I buy this underwear, I will not wear clothes too. <laughs> she said, why? I said, because I have to show everybody that I bought this underwear for 25,000 naira. How much am I earning that I'm going to? Because everybody would have to go to a mall to buy a suit of 100 pounds, to buy a suit of $500. Do I have to? I don't have to. Unrealistic lifestyle. A lot of people live that way. And of course, they are not able to grow their money. Another reason is failure to set or establish financial goals. I have that that too many people spend money they haven't earned to buy things they don't want. Earlier this year, Pastor passed around something for us to set 20-year plan. 
I really loved it. I told him I usually do 5-10 years. I've never had to do 20. But that helped me stretch me a little. But if you look at it, there's a portion that talks about financial goals. A lot of us don't set financial goals and that's why we don't, we're not able to grow our money. In such an amount of years, I want to be, I've been able to do this. When I joined the financial institution, on my pay, the appointment letter they gave us, I saw 1.1 and I was very happy. It was going to be about 91,000 monthly. So I told my mom, I said, mom, in five years time, I'm going to leave. I would save this, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do that. And then having worked for one and a half months, I saw 75,000 in my, in my account. Ah, I called everybody that we entered together. I said, please, did I offend anybody? Why am I being paid? And they told me, go and check what they gave us. There's one thing there that they wrote after confirmation. And that is if I perform, I say, yeah, good. Immediately, I called my mom and said, mom, plans have changed. I won't live in five years, but in five years, I must have been able to build a house. Why am I saying this? There's need to set financial goals. If we don't, we'll just stay where we are and we'll move forward. We keep wishing. When you wish and you don't have deadlines, sure, what are they? It's just a dream. Until you're able to set deadlines to them, then it becomes a goal. We need to set financial goals. Not only goals for spiritual not only for our family, not only for vacation, not only for that. Financial goals is very, very important because the scripture says money answers all things. So financial goal setting is very important. A lot of people are not able to grow their money because they don't have financial goals. Another one I have there is failure to develop savings as a habit. And that's why I said I'm emphasizing on savings today, growing your money emphasizing on savings savings is a habit it's not something you start and stop the book of habits we say if you do something continuously for 21 days it becomes part and parcel of you so there's need to make savings a habit if it's not a habit i can tell you you can't go far okay what are some myths about money we're going to be looking at them this morning I have heard that following a budget, budget inhibits my freedom of choice. A lot of people believe that if I set the way I'm going to use my money, I'm not going to be free. But in reality, when you follow a budget, you have greater control over important choices. There's need to be able to know what is important, what is urgent. Last week at the assembly in Children's Church, we are talking about managing our money as well and i told them there's need to know the difference between needs and wants scripture says god will supply all our needs not our wants so budgeting helps us to do that but a lot of people think that budgeting is like a gate man that doesn't allow me to do what i want to do it's actually meant to be a compass for us to guide us in the way we manage and grow our money Another myth is that the government or the employer or somebody else is responsible for my welfare. People have that. I'm working. Ah, my employer should be able to, you know, pay me gratuity. Where I work, there's no gratuity. That sank into my head early enough. You are responsible for your tomorrow. Now and tomorrow. Where I work, you go, they give you a very good bye-bye, we love you. Of course, some organizations may give you gratuity, but whether they give you or not, there is need to know that you are the one responsible for your own ultimate financial welfare. The sooner we realize that, the quicker we are on our road to wealth. Of course, some will say they are not working, they are self-employed. It's also necessary for us to know that we are also responsible for ourselves. It's not the business. It's not the government. If government policy favored me, I would get more. No. We are responsible for our own welfare. Retirement planning is only for those that are old, close to retirement. But the truth of it is, 
as early as possible retirement planning is for everybody everybody the moment you start to work even if it's holiday jobs the moment you start to work is the time to start planning for retirement I met someone a customer walked up to me and gave me a dividend of 14 million in 2004 to pay into his account and my mind went I said if this man wasn't working he's collecting I can't imagine times 10 what I'm collecting me that will come to the office 7 to 7 and he I had to ask him I said sir what happened and he told me when he was in school when others felt they could do anything with their money he started looking at the future and started investing his money saving and investing and that's why what he does as far back as 2004 is just to collect his dividend and enjoy himself that was just one of the shares he bought 14 million dividend last month or last two weeks they paid zenith dividend and i know some people that got as high as 10 to 38 million so it's necessary for us to know that retirement is not when we are close to retirement of course some of us might have been old 40 50 60 but we can still start when we're watching the film about planning for 20 years one of the things that was said is some people became president at 70 so you cannot really say when you will die so there's need to start planning for tomorrow how then do we grow our money how then do we grow our money the first thing I have here is know your financial status. Know your financial status. You need to know where you are before you start. If I'm going to Lagos, I need to sit down and ask myself, okay, I'm going to Lagos, what and what? So there's need to know where we are before we start. There's need to know and have a personal financial statement. A lot of, a lot of us have... Um, personal goals, personal statements, vision statements, but we also need to have financial statements. And of course, organizations, we see them from time to time, roll out their financial statements to actually show us their positions. We also need to have such. We need to know what our assets are, what our liabilities are. Some of these things we have heard before, but I'm saying that we must make up our mind to take action today. Assets and liability. I read a book Robert Kiyosaki, and he said, your house is not your asset. At first, I used to believe that my house is my asset. But it made me to understand, it's when you have another house that you can call it an asset, when it generates a rental income for you. Because your own house, you're going to have to maintain it. You may decide to change details. You may decide to do this. You're going to be paying bills. So your house is not your asset. We need to know that. We need to be able to say, these are my assets, these are my liabilities. Of course, cars are not assets. They take from us. Whatever takes from you is a liability. Whatever gives to you is an asset. Simple terms. Adds to you is your asset. Takes from you is a liability. And of course, we need to know our cash flow. What comes in, what goes out. It's very important. How much do I get? Even if your income is staggered, at least when it's coming, you will have an idea. This is how much is coming to me. There's need to know how much comes in, how much goes out. Bishop Oedepo was saying that he, then, I don't know if he still does it now, that he writes down everything he spends his money on. The first time I heard that, I was like, ah, that's cumbersome. But I tried it. And it really opened my eyes to a lot of things. When I get money and I say, this is what I'm going to spend, I would, as I'm spending, maybe I buy something, I write it down. Sometimes I review it. And what it does is it enables me to know where my money is actually going to. Is it to things I really need or is it to frivolous things? Maybe chocolate, ice cream. Once in a while, you won't take yourself out. Or is it to drugs? Maybe in a month you spend so much on drugs. 
Is there something you could do to reduce that? That's what this does for us. It just helps us to know exactly where we are and helps us to be able to plan ahead. So there's need to know our financial status. There's something passed up past some time ago, which if we are able to get our hands on is good for us to be able to actually set out our assets, set out our liabilities. House, if you're renting, is a liability. Even if it's yours, it's a liability. Except it's another one that is giving you money. Credit or store cards. Some of us have credit cards. If you use it, it's a liability. If you don't, even, even if you don't, you'll be charged on it. Bank, do you have cash, savings, and all like that? And, of course, the one down there is just for you to know your cash in and your cash out. Growing our money. Set financial goals. Have financial plans. It's not enough to set goals. You must plan achieving them. And our goals have to be smart. Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. I'm earning 10000 monthly. And I tell myself, I want to save $1 million at the end of this year. I don't know how. But we have short-term goals, mid-term goals, long-term goals. Having one million in an account can be a mid-term goal. You can say, okay, maybe in five to seven years, I can achieve that. But there's need to set goals and to plan. It's not just to say, this is what I want by this time, and then you leave it there. The work is actually in the planning, sitting down, and seeing how those goals will be achieved. Because if we just set the goals and we don't look at planning, we will not achieve them. And when we don't achieve them, we feel that we have not set the goals. And that's why our goals have to be realistic. When we set realistic goals and we achieve them, or we are close to achieving 75%, 80%, it gives us courage to set more goals. It's not as if all the goals I've ever set has been 100%, but to a very large extent, 70 to 80% of those goals. Sometimes I tell myself, I want to be, I've been able to do this in two years, in three years, and I'm able to achieve it because I sit down and I plan how to get there, how to actually get there. It's very, very important. If we need to grow our money, we need to have those goals and plan and when we plan them we need to act on those plans not just have it down write the vision make it plain that day that we will run with it run with it not just read it and stay there so there's need to have financial plans spend less than you earn don't eat with all your fingers if you need to grow your money you're out must always be less than you're in. It's very important. A lot of times we say it's not possible, but it is. We shouldn't eat with all our fingers. You know, that's what people say. Everything you get, just consume. No. If all that we're getting is all that we're consuming, then we can't grow our money. We just stay where we are. And of course, if we are where we are, we can't pay our bills, which is what we are looking at this month. The skills to pay our bills, we won't be able to do it. And in time, we'll always have problems. But when we decide to keep a little of what we earn, it's like a seed. Some time ago, very long time ago, Pastor Francis said something, that when you keep something, it's like a seed. Even if you don't have all that you need, you can get somebody that can help you. That helped me in 2006 when I wanted to get um, land because I believe so much in savings. I just make sure no matter how small I save. And then I had 600,000 and the land was going for 950. I was bold to walk up to somebody and say, I have this, but I need this. And the person felt, oh, you almost have everything. It was easy to give. But if I didn't have anything, if I had consumed everything, I'm sure the person would say, come back tomorrow. 
I'm sure I can't help you because there's no equity. Even when you go to banks and say, I need to buy a car or I need to buy a house, they ask you for your equity, your own share of the money. This is where it comes from, where you don't spend all that you earn. Okay, another way to grow our money is budgeting. I talked about that. We must live within our means and avoid credit as much as possible. This is a country that we see people borrow to bury. They want to bury daddy and mommy that have gone and then they go borrowing. It's ridiculous. Or they want to buy a car. They go borrowing. I don't know. I'd rather borrow to buy a house that I know that if I rent it out, it would give me money rather than borrow to buy a car or borrow to do a party. I'm not against um, parties, but I'm saying that as much as possible, we should live within our means. That's something we talk about a lot where I work. We tell people, if you are collecting 45,000, try and stay there. Because where I work, immediately you start borrowing and borrowing and borrowing. They tell themselves, this person can last. Because if you cannot pay back, what is it going to do? My steal. So they ask you out. It's necessary to live within our means. And that's what budget does. It's like a Bible for our finances. When you sit down and write down what you want to use your money for, even before the money comes, which is always the best, before the money comes, not after the money has come. Because after the money has come, in most cases, we just spend it anyhow. But even if the money came and you didn't expect it, leave it. Leave it a day or two and plan how you use that money so that we can make the best use of it. Okay, this is where we are going. Save. Save, save, save. It's very, very important. I have here that financial wisdom throughout ages emphasizes that savings is a foundation, the guarantor, and the leverage for achieving financial security. I read this book very early, Richest Man in Babylon. I loved that book. And it says that saving is the first step leading to the temple of wealth. No one may climb who cannot plant his feet firmly on the first step. And the first step is savings. You want to get up there, you want to have so much money, you must first plant your feet firmly. You know, when I, it's not just planting it, it's saying firmly. That means it must be something that is part and parcel of you. Not, oh, I start this year, and in two years, this is how much I've made, and then you relax. No, it is something that has to be continuous. He advises, I found the road to wealth when I decided that a part of all I earn was mine to keep. A part of all I earn was mine to keep. I tell people that savings is a principle of paying yourself first. Of course, after our tithes. But the book will tell you 10%, keep it aside. 10%, keep it aside. So if we also give 10% of our tithes to God, we can give ourselves 10%. But we must give ourselves something. Every gold piece that you save is a slave to work for you. A slave to work for you. It could be now, it could be later. But most of the time, it's always later. If you spend more than you make, you're spending your future income. And if you don't take care of your emergencies, who will? And some people say, I imagine, I, I, I asked for help, they didn't give me. The emergencies will come. So, you need to prepare for it. The dictionary defines savings as money that you set aside. The money that is saved for future use. You keep a little of everything that you earn for later. Savings is one of man's earliest survival strategies. Yet many of us go about like it's not important. But it's actually a survival strategy. If a farmer consumes everything that he earns or everything that he reaps, what's going to happen tomorrow? All of us will have hunger strike. So it has always been. But nowadays, a lot of us just think we can make through life 
without it. There's no shortcut to it. It's a very, very important thing. Savings. The first step to getting to the peak of wealth. If we do it, we will see the reward. A lot of people that we see or that we know, well, probably because of where I work, I'm exposed to so many people. And when they tell you their story, this is key. Savings. Very key. Almost everybody I've had to ask one thing or the other. How did you get here? How were you able to make so much? How do you have so much? All I keep hearing is I kept a little of all that I had and I kept doing that every time. You cannot go through life consuming all that you produce. Why do we save? I've been talking about that. We save for major purchases, for expenses. We save to build funds for emergencies. Emergencies will always come. We cannot but do without it. They will come. You need to go to the hospital. You need to do this. Um, car breaks down, accident. They will always come. So there is need to, for us to save. Providing funds for a comfortable financial future. And it's very key. There's a saying, I can't remember who said it, that if you live like no one is living now, you will also live like no one will live later. So, if now you're keeping a little of all that you're earning and other people are spending everything, later when you're relaxed and enjoying, they will still be. I talked about somebody that gave me a dividend of 40 million about that time too somebody walked up to me with a check of 1.8 said he had worked in an organization for 25 years and they paid him 1.8 and he came to me and said please what do you advise i do with this 1.8 so i asked him sir do you have a house Mm, I'm about completing it. Uh, do you have uh, savings? Do you have shares? And everything was a no, no, no. And he worked in a very good organization, Nigerian bottling company. And I was, I was a little um, surprised. 1.8. There and then where I sat, I could finish 1.8. So I, I, I didn't know what to do. So I... With my little experience, I tried to, I said, sir, maybe you put um, one million in a fixed deposit and then it will be generating small money. You can be managing that. Then the car you have, you can use it um, for Kabu Kabu. Try and see if you can complete your house and at least find somewhere to stay so that um, rent will not. But when he left, that day, I told myself, this mustn't be your story. Somebody I saw before then told me he was saving and investing. Now, I have somebody that worked for 25 years and had no savings. So it's very important that we save. And of course, for us to be financially independent, savings is key. It's key. You can decide you don't want to work again. What I mean work, I mean active work as a result of the things that you have put in place. And the starting point is savings, which I'm emphasizing on. If we don't have a savings account or we have one that we are using like a normal, then we need to decide today to keep money aside. Okay, I have some myth about savings as well. I want to start saving with a large sum of money. We hear a lot of people say that. Ah, hmm, you see, when I have 100,000, I will start. No, it doesn't start like that and doesn't go like that. Even if it's with 200 naira, if it's 1,000 naira, some will say, I'm earning as low as 10,000. Keep 10%. Don't worry about it. Just keep it. Every month, every week, whichever, we just keep and see what it would turn out to be. You don't mind that it's small. Because I have some people that will tell you it's so small. There's a group of people 
what we're doing is whatever you can save just keep putting it in the account and as soon as the money gets to a particular amount i call them i move this money to where you can't even assess it a deposit of course some of them when they hear the call they are surprised that have i been able to save up two hundred thousand? so it's not until we have so much whatever it is that we have let us start with it like we saw the two savers one of them started early with another one started later and but we just have to start with whatever we have no matter how small remember it's little drops of water make a mighty ocean when we keep dropping it there last week i told the children three jars every parent should give them three jars savings spending and giving and any money put in their savings is for them if it gets to an amount just go and put it in in an account for them and i told them if mommy and daddy spends your money in savings come and tell me they will refund it for you it must go to an account because it's very very important i shall start saving after my next increment bonus or promotion some people say that ah, this level that i am now i can't afford to remove anything i just cannot afford it but you see when they promote me tomorrow next week next year i will start we discover that expenses will rise to that same level of income it must be a deliberate action to keep money aside deliberate once you pay your tight pay yourself first that's the principle of savings pay yourself first make it a duty to pay yourself even if the money is so small 1000 naira get a cash gift of 1000 naira 100 naira for god 100 naira for lola save it if you do not implement the saving plan at your present income the chances will be that you'll never be able to do that i tell people if you cannot save with 10000 if you have 1 million you will never be able to save never you will never be able to save there's no two way about it if you cannot start with as low as 5000 income 10000 income even when you have 50 million because it's not part of you it's not there before you know it expenses will come such that even that 50 million will be so small you'll be like ah no you have to wait again and don't forget we said one of the issues why people don't grow their money is when they procrastinate on savings another myth is that there's no way to reduce my expenses and save people will tell you that ah. i actually spoke with somebody last year december we we're working together he called me and said how are you doing it you're doing this you can still pay bills you can still school fees build a house how are you doing it and i told him that shouldn't be an issue for you now you are collecting like times two what i'm collecting so he said ah my expenses are so much i said really he said at the end of the month i'm even looking for how to get money to take care of myself and i'm surprised i'm like how why that shouldn't be and then he rolled out all his expenses i said really that's good but you have some major money that come in. Why can't you tie some major expenses to this major money? So, I do understand. So we started working together. And then I told him, if you could just give me a chance, you know, we can do something. And he said, okay, I will. I said, tell me everything. Let me know where you are. And then let's know where we can kick from there. He said, when you're writing out your expenses, you don't write your name. You don't see yourself like... You need to pay yourself so let's see what we can reduce even if it's one one thousand from other people that you are paying and add it to yourself so when you're writing tight offering whatever it is then you put your name lola then other names that you have or other things remove even if it's 500 from them because it has a long list of people that it pays monthly i said you are giving them now uh -huh. so reduce from them one one thousand put it in your own name they will call you and say ah brother you reduce this thing say, my sister don't mind just manage that with me this month don't worry and of course it started that they would definitely they called him because they felt that is their right to collect 
that amount of money monthly and he decided to take off about two three thousand and he told them going forward that's what you'll be getting and he started adding that to himself and of course we are progressing so it has to be a deliberate act to keep money aside another main thing is that i shall start saving after i've paid off my personal debts some of us have debts like me in 2011 when the bank laid off that was the first time the bank would ever lay off and um, i was in deficit but i told myself i needed to pay but because then i believe so much in just have to have um, investments i i didn't believe so much in cash savings which of course is important i had that issue but i went back and i told i'm going to be giving you this and i started keeping a little money aside so it's not until you finish paying your debts you must start now even if you have debt restructure the repayment and start keeping a little aside types of savings you now i talked about the need to you know not for me it was before everything i had was going to shares and then property but i read the book millionaire next door cash is also important cash is king so there's need for us to diversify our savings there's need for us to spread our money so even if you're paying debt please go back and restructure i was in deficit of 2.5 in 2011 november and i told myself if the, you have been asked to go what will happen you had you had a house mm. you were collecting rental income how much 250 of course it's not as if that won't pay but so there's need for one to diversify one savings but the starting point is save we have investment savings we have shares we have stocks that a lot of us know fixed deposits your money gets to an amount of money you put it in fixed deposits bonds guarantees treasury bill real estate of course you can also save for large purchases large purchases you want to go to school outside it's a large purchase you want to buy a house emergency funds it's very important to have savings some money set aside because if everything is in investments and you need urgent cash what happens and of course retirement savings should also be in cash for us when we leave i want to say it's important that in everything we have said we don't leave out god even the principle of savings was taught from the scriptures god told joseph to save 20 percent every month every year for seven years if we do 20 times 7 that's 140 percent but that 140 percent was what was used for the remaining seven years so it's a principle that has always been it's not just now that we're saying save 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 we're saying that it's something that must be done something that should be part and parcel of us in conclusion i would say start now start early for the young children among us i've told them they must start now now so parents please let's encourage them let them start now for us even if we have not started it's not too late we can start today we can start today start with any amount you have no matter how small no matter how small one thousand two hundred because some people believe if i don't have up to ten thousand i can't save no whatever amount it is let's not look at the figure just keep putting it aside if you put money in savings account you get interest of 4.2 and it keeps going just be putting it there and see what it will become at the end of it all and i have there be disciplined make savings a habit if we need to grow our money if we need to be able to pay our bills you must make savings a habit thank you um let's appreciate her one more time
let, let, let me say this. Let me say this. Because sometimes we have people come up on the pulpit and are teaching you theory. She's not. This is something she lives. This is something she does. Uh, I don't want to... If she's not prepared to share it with anybody, well, I'm not going to share it on your behalf. But you need to see what she's done with her resources, very little resources. She technically pays her, pays her own trips abroad to go and get trained and expose herself to some of these things. So I want to say I'm incredibly proud of her and, and some of the fantastic things she's done in, in many years. When I, when I was told that she was selected to come and speak this morning, I had every confidence, and among the women, I allowed the women to select who was going to speak. I said it was, it was okay. There was no hesitation on my part because I felt it was, it was good to have somebody who's doing it, not somebody who's coming to give you theory. And because of that, I want to stop for a few more minutes and ask, I want you to ask questions because this is a real issue for us. This is a real issue for us. It's really in this part of the world. It's a real issue. Jide, can you get the microphone? It's a real issue for us in the third world here. This complete lack of faith in the concept of savings based on the fact that we consider ourselves to be poor. We consider ourselves to be poor. So I want to open up. I want her to take a few questions because she'll be able to tell you from a practical point of view. Some of the, Who wants to ask any questions? There's somebody there. Do want, I want to take about two or three questions and then she can respond to anybody else. Anybody else wants to ask a question? It's either you're not saving, that's why you don't want to ask. So you're, you're already ashamed of yourself, so that's fine. Because this is what happens to people. You're, you're going to listen to it and you're going to go and sleep. And then five years will go. And then you hear the message. We haven't preached it for a long time in church. And we normally do. As a matter of fact, the children's church, I remember buying them not only buying them, but making kits for them, for savings. So a few years ago, and I think we were basically discouraged by the attitudes of their parents who refused to support what we were trying to do. We had bought each kid a kit for savings, for investments, for spending. And we spent money with Mrs. Olalekun to come up with concepts to teach our children. And it was the parents that put us out of business because they don't save either. So we know. And this is what discourages the 20-year plan, most of you didn't feel it, which is fine. I've moved on. All right? It's up to you. All right? Go ahead and ask your question. Okay, like I said, savings should be a habit, whether you are married. Okay. Okay, his question is, is advisable to save before marriage or before you are married? Because after marriage, it's always difficult to save. <laughs> well, it's not true. Savings should be a habit. Once you develop that habit, whether you are married, whether you are not, it's just part of you. I gave us an illustration of somebody who having worked for 19 years, he's worked for 19 years, and he doesn't have any savings because he believes that his expenses are so much. So even when he was not married, he wasn't saving. So it has nothing to do with marriage. It just has to do with being disciplined now and like I said when you take out tithes offering the next expense should be you that's how I budget when I take out my tithes and I take out my offering or whatever giving I want to do the next expense is Lola the amount may not be so much but the next person that gets paid on that list is me then school fees feeding whatever fuel so it has to start now because even if you start it now we are not against it if you stop then sure you will still make money when you have your money in an account but why not just keep doing even if when you get married you reduce it 
Some people, when they get married, reduce how much they save. But make it a habit. Because once you're doing it, even as a married man, it helps even your children. Because they see that in you as a habit. As a habit and they just pick it up from them. So it's not, it's not, it's advisable to just do it all the way through. Okay, thank you. Uh, I want to ask, because a friend of mine called me yesterday and she was like, you know, this is my family, this is my family, this is my family. My mom will call and she starts crying. I don't want to always see her cry. I don't want to do this. And she was telling me now she's feeling bad that she can't help. She's incompetent. She's this. I'm like, okay. After everything, I'm like, what do you want to do now? She said, I don't know. So I've told her to get some stuff on credit so at the end of the month, I can transfer the money back to her to pay her up and stuff like that. I'm like, okay. So like, Personally, I just advise her uh, the little way I can. I think these things sometimes happen to most of us. Like we get so emotional that, ah, this is my day, then the next month again, she'll be ready to save another life. So how do we do this? How do we try to work on our own emotional aspect of it than our savings? Thank you. Okay. I would give them um, how I do it. Like I said, when I'm budgeting, there's also a portion for giving, for helping. It's not that it's just God, me, school fees. There's also a portion for helping people. Aside paying my family, you understand? After I said, okay, I'm giving this to mom. I'm the first of nine. So, and I don't have a father again. So, after I put mom wherever I want to give, I still have a little that I keep aside to help people. Now, you can't give what you don't have. So if in a month, what I set aside to help people is 50,000, for example, and I've used that. Maybe somebody comes to me, A, I need 100,000. I give you maybe 10 out of what you need. At least I've solved the problem a little. Another person comes, I give. Mainly that 50,000 is gone. There's really nothing I can do. But if it's a matter of life and death, like I said, emergency funds, if it's a matter of life and death, you've saved money. Don't forget we have different types of savings. The one for investment. If you put your money, your investment money, and, and it's in, um, let's say, fixed deposit for six months if you crash it you lose an interest so you weigh the option should i crash or not but if you have an investment a, an emergency fund what i do for my, my emergency fund is i have money fixed and then tell them every month put the interest in an account so i can go and pick from that and don't forget i said it should be a habit so even if you take away from it it should go back it should go back. What happens to a lot of us is when we take away, it's difficult to put it back. That's why we have the issue. But once it's every time, it's part of us, then taking it back will not be difficult. I hope I was able to. Thank you. Good morning. I agree with the concept of saving. But my question to you, after you have saved a certain amount, is it advisable, being that you're a banker, to continue saving or take a portion and invest? Because the return on the savings for me is not that much. I'd rather do business investment and get a larger return. So what would be your response to that? Okay. There are different types of savings. You know, savings, like I said, is a habit. The principle of paying yourself first. Once you develop that habit, after a while, I talked about the people that... Once their money hits 100000 I ask them to move it into fixed deposit. Now, deposit is like an investment because you can't immediately assess that fund. Now, you get higher interest. Now, you can take from there again and go into real estate, go into business, get a return. When it comes back, it's, when it comes back, ensure it comes back. Like I said, I started with everything goes to shares. Everything I was saving then was going to shares. Everything. I had quite millions of them, shares portfolio. And then after a while, I went to property. I, I didn't really have cash savings. 
until the first tsunami in where I work. So I started keeping a little of cash. And when you look at financial statements of organizations, of companies, under current assets, you see cash. So it's also important that we also have current assets of cash. So even if you have other investments, you must have cash, no matter how little. Now when you have those cash, you put it where you get higher return. Fixed deposit will give you, treasury bill will give you higher return, mutual funds will give you, things that you can easily redeem. We have liquid cash, we have fixed cash, fixed, fixed assets. Those are your real estate and other things. Liquid assets are things that you can easily get back. Like if you put cash in fixed deposit or you put it in mutual funds or you put it in treasury bills, you know that after a certain period it comes back to you. So there is need to also have cash as part of our current assets. All right. Um, some two things I want to say before I... Let's appreciate her. Come on. First and foremost, the reason why our parents are in the situation where they are now is because they didn't do what we're saying you should do now. And if you continue and don't break that chain, you know what I mean? Then you're going to give your children the problems your parents are giving you now. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Most of us don't understand that if you don't believe you're going to live till 70, don't save. It's a faith proposition. Savings is an act of faith. It means I'm going to be alive tomorrow. Therefore, I'm planning for my tomorrow. But if you think you're going to die, stop. just spend all the money you want to spend as you get it. Your choice. But to make this a little bit better, because I've been thinking about what we're going to, where we're going to go next month, what I'm going to do is that, do you want me, there's a particular course called Financial Peace University by Dave Ramsey. So would you be interested if I took one month off next month to focus on financial peace? It's bigger than savings. Am I making sense? Are you here? Because he talks about emergency funds. He talks about, you know what I mean? So we're going to look at it and get a team of people together. To, I think I've already given it to Mr. Rabo. I think I've given him some of the materials. I think I've given it to Pastor Sean as well. So we're going to sit down and look at financial peace. Uh, cost by, it's a cost by Dave Ramsey. But we have to adapt it to the African uh, context. Because it's really based, a lot of it is to help Americans who are in debt. But since Africans don't even have debt to be in. You know what I mean? With banks and so on and so forth. So we're going to package it. So next month, we'll look at financial peace university courses for our real success is that okay with you good so we're going to do that then next week and uh, i think on the last sunday of this month as well um pastor pastor kunle uh akinwale will be back to talk about fx i mean trading on uh, online that's from next sunday and then we'll see how we can package an interactive service that is more practical where you can actually start doing something with him and maybe one or two other people. Is that okay too? All right. That's my job to put together something to help you get your life better. So once more, let's thank Sister Lola for reminding us of something that we need to do. Um, let me let me just say this. Um, uh, I remember the young man that asked question about saving. As a matter of fact, if you get into marriage and you don't teach your family how to save, you're in trouble. And by the way, you're going to be two. And therefore, your ability to multiply your savings should even go up. Am I making sense? Because now, both of you have two incomes. You know what I mean? And you should even save more. So it's the other way around. There's a lot of stories running around about what is not possible. You know, about it's difficult to save in Nigeria. It's difficult. That's not true. That's not true. It's difficult to save anywhere. It's not, it's not true. I mean, if most of, you know, I, I laugh at all sometimes when we want to... I have... I have uh, a brother, a brother-in-law in, um, in, um, in America. I have brother-in-laws in England. And when we go to them, and we go to their, we, we get to their houses and we go visiting, our mouths always fall like gap. They're driving brand new cars. They're living in these fantastic houses. I mean, and we're thinking, oh my God, we're suffering in Nigeria. You know what I mean? And then they'll say, you didn't call before you came. <laughs> go back. And Nigerians, I'm not talking about foreigners. Nigerians will tell you, you didn't call before you came. So we didn't plan for you, so you're not part of our budget. It's easy.
easier to set up business in this country than any other country in the world. It's, you can get away with a lot of things. Taxes. Some of you think it's wise to start with a limited liability company. The minute you start with a limited liability company, the government is watching you. Sometimes it's better to start with a business name. Pay your personal income tax. Stay quietly until you grow to the place where you, you start limited. You're just, you see their name. Oluwa Sheung Abiodu Limited. You're in trouble. Try it abroad. You want to open a kitchen? The number of certificates you have to get. They will come and inspect. Uh, are you qualified to do this? You want to be a plumber? Do you hear what I said? You want to be a plumber? You are certified. Carpenter, you are certified. Here, you can put so-so and so carpentry and sons and employ somebody and they will let you do your business for free. You really think things are that bad? It's decision time. I, I think it's this famous um, preacher, what's his name? Um, Idahosa. I, I like him for some of his <laughs> anecdotes where he talks about things like a lizard in Nigeria cannot become an alligator in America. You, if you live here as, an, as a lizard, you arrive in America as another frozen lizard. The skills you need to acquire, it doesn't matter which country you acquire them at. Whichever country you go to, you apply the same. You think there are no poor people in America? I don't know why we think there are no poor people in America. I've, I, I've lived in somebody's house whose house was programmed for it was, it was already programmed for demolition he was living in squatter apartment nicely furnished, flat screen TV carpet, the whole works but the building was because he couldn't pay rent and he had a cow there are poor people everywhere poverty these are the things that help you to break the back of poverty. If you cannot save money, if you cannot tithe, if you cannot give, it means money is controlling you. You are not controlling it. And if you don't take control of your life by taking control over your money, I, I had the privilege of listening to somebody say this a few days ago. I was in Kigali over the weekend and I'll talk to you about that sometime, maybe next Sunday. He said, I'm trying to remember how he put it. He says, if you believe you're going to do something and it's going to kill you, it means that thing is your God. He says, if Jesus is your God, nothing can kill you. He was trying to explain to us that some of us, our fears have become our God rather than God himself. Do you see the way the average Yoruba man prays when he buys a car? When he builds a house. When they are getting married, you will not end up in divorce. Number three, you will not be barren. What kind of stupid prayer is that? Did you get married to go to divorce court? Did you marry to become barren? Or did you build a house so that it gets burned? Or did you buy a car that is meant for accidents? So when you are traveling to Lagos, what are you more afraid of that you don't die? Not that the trip you are going through is successful. If your trip to Lagos is successful, it means you didn't die. We are beginning to be controlled by our fears. We are beginning to be controlled by the things we think are impossible. Yet, the Bible tells you and I that with God, with God, did you hear what I said? With God, what did he say? With God, some of you are going to quote it and you are going to quote it wrongly. With God, nothing, no, 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 they, 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 they say they don't know. You can Google it, you can check your Bible. What did he say? With God, nothing shall be impossible. Not what is. Nothing shall be impossible. 
you can save say it i can save i can have an emergency fund i can send money into my future because with god nothing shall be impossible and god is with me i believe you oh god for the ability to do right by by you for the ability to do right for my by my family for the ability to do right financially the ability to prosper in the midst of all this father i believe you thank you father we give you praise in jesus name bring out your tithes and offering if you still like praise the lord when we were in jesus embassy um i'm thank, I'm thank god she's still there yeah? her name is kemi johnson kemi, kemi at detoba now she was kemi johnson there i started teaching savings in jesus embassy and all of a sudden the offering in jesus embassy fell to the lowest that it had ever been and kemi came panicking and said pastor what are you doing you are teaching people to save they stopped giving i said she should just watch she should just watch she should wait and watch it wasn't up to three to four months later but the job the offering in church doubled you say why when you teach people to do right they prosper you think by telling people the truth you're holding them back you're not because when they started saving they started seeing more opportunities and they started making money because it's almost like a, it's like i don't know how to explain it it's like something opens up in you when you do something when you start saving for instance how many of you how many of you should reach rich dad poor dad there's a story there about three boys two boys who were given an opportunity to work in their father's supermarket and when they got there the man said how much do you want me to pay you and the boys were a little bit panicking and he offered them a very ridiculous ridiculous amount like one dollar a day and the, the boys were very angry that it's too low so the man said okay you know what i'll pay you twenty dollars a day or five dollars or ten dollars which was about what an adult was getting and the boys knew something was wrong so the man said to them what do you want me to pay you the boys finally got wise and said nothing nothing and they said it was instinctive so the man said okay he said, but because they were being paid nothing their eyes suddenly opened they noticed that comics were being returned that were not sold it's in the book rich rich, rich dad poor dad comics were being returned and then they went up to the man who was taking the comics back sir why why what because the man will come and cut off the head of the comic and throw it away and then throw the comics out so the man said listen can we have these comics instead of you destroying the man said yes you can have these comics if you don't sell them it's a beautiful story you need to go read it and so they said okay you know what they took the comics from the man went to the basement of one of their uh parents house and set up a comic library and children will come in to read comics as many comics as they wanted to read for one cent or ten cents a day ten cents a day and they found out that sometimes 50 kids will come 20 kids will come and read the comics free of charge and then go and they were making more money than adults were making from that simple they would not have seen that they would never have seen that opportunity if that road to not earning money had not been closed so when you save all of a sudden what's going to happen to you when you tithe all of a sudden what happens the bible says windows windows of heaven ideas are poured out into your life you begin to see things you didn't see before it's by your releasing what you have into your future that the windows get open and then you are able to now see opportunities you didn't see before so lift up your tithes and offering to talk to god tell him he promised you windows tell him he promised you ideas tell him he promised you ways of escape tell him you want to obey him in the area of tithing you want to obey him in the area of savings tell him you are afraid if you are afraid tell him that you you you, you have your doubts but you're still going to believe him you see faith will walk in your heart with doubt in your head faith is not of the head it's of the heart never worry about what your head is saying look at what your heart is saying and the heart is what responds to the word of god because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word tell him you're scared you are scared to obey him in tithing you are scared to obey him in savings but tell him the truth but your fear is overcome by your belief in him that he can never lead you in the wrong direction 
and then say and then he also this is one of the few scriptures in the bible where he actually tells you test me and see try me and see try him with savings try him we give you praise in jesus name amen praise the lord today is mother's day we're going to give you a 15 minute coffee break amen i don't know what that means when they say it's mother's day is it that all mothers give birth this day now is it his mother's birthday but we'll out as the service goes along so women are going to take over the service god bless us god help us god protect us and god keep us and women are going to take over the service from here and uh, whatever they do is their fault if they do well i encourage them if they did badly they did it by themselves all right <laughs>